name is Yehuda Lindell. I am the CEO of Unbound Security, and I'm a cryptographer by training. And uh, I'm going to present Unbound Core to you today, uh, the key management platform that uh, is reinventing cryptography for the enterprise. In order to get uh, understand the context of what we're trying to solve, I'm going to try and show you what a typical enterprise looks like today in terms of their cryptographic infrastructure. Cryptography is used everywhere in computer security today in uh, many types of solutions from authenticating humans and machines to server-side encryption, signing for privacy, integrity. It's used everywhere. What that means is that we need to uh, manage all of those solutions. Now, all of cryptography relies on a secret key. And that uh, secret key needs somehow to be protected from being stolen. And the, uh, um, the philosophy used to be to build some fo fortress around this and prevent the key from being stolen from, from that place. That has challenges that I'll talk about for a moment. But if that key is stolen, everything is lost. So we have to protect that key. But the problem now becomes that that key is not in one place, but in many different places. So uh, in a typical enterprise, a situation now we have on-prem data centers so we can think about having a number of different data centers these are belonging to the enterprise they're their they're their own on top of that we're looking at cloud migration adopting different uh, uh, clouds for different applications so we may have an installation in AWS and we may have another one in uh, Google Cloud and there may be another one in Azure and why do we have many different uh, cloud installations? Because different clouds have different features and different properties. And typically, it's not the case an enterprise says, OK, I have my on-prem data center. I'm going to uh, flip a switch and put everything in the cloud. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, these are big installations. And we, we migrate slowly depending on what uh, we want to solve in the cloud. So GCP has big query, which is great for uh, doing analytics. Uh, but AWS will have other features and Azure other features. And different business units with different problems want to go to different clouds. So now we have this situation where we have to protect our keys here. And we have to protect our keys here. And of course, in all of these data centers that we belong to us. But then we also have, uh, uh, have key stores in, in all of these as well. But all of these work completely differently. It's not the same solution. And I have to find a different uh, um, key management solution in, in each one. So I may be using a cloud HSM or physical HSMs, or I may be using key management systems in the cloud. And, uh, um, and that introduces a huge amount of challenges. Let's just take one specific example. I have an application that uh, I want to, that, that's on-prem right now, and now I want to move it to Azure. And for that situation, in order to do that, I want to use Azure's uh, key store, which is called Azure Vault. Okay, so I want to use Azure Vault. And uh, the problem is that my application, which was on-prem, was written in, in, in a way that I worked with my local HSM, uh, for example, using a library called PKSS11. And uh, th that's the way I used it over here. Uh, but Azure Vault doesn't actually support PKSS11. So now I have to rewrite my application. And if I rewrite my application so that it uh, uses Azure Vault in, in, in the way that Vault specifically works, when I now want to go, if I wanted to go to AWS with that application because uh, it's cheaper now or there are other benefits and I want to change, uh, suddenly I have to rewrite the application again. And this is, that's just one application, but we have many, many different applications and many, many different solutions. And there becomes this massive mess of different environments and different clouds and different key stores. Uh, for different applications, and, uh, uh, and that's something uh, is a, that is a huge problem with, uh, for organizations today. Also, if we think about the, uh, the notion of cloud adoption or cloud, mi cloud migration, I, I like saying cloud, mi cloud migration more than adoption because it's not an automatic and immediate thing. This is something that happens over time. Uh, it can, it, these are projects that often take years. And in the, initially, we're going to continue working on-prem and in a cloud. So we're going to have a first initial initiative to uh, go to Azure, uh, to go to AWS. Uh, great. So we want to take some of our applications from our on-prem environment and we want to put them in AWS. Uh, but again, that's not an immediate thing. We, we begin by uh, gradually moving some things out, by running in parallel. And we'd like to be able to work in the same way in both environments. 
And that, that, uh, uh, that, that's a huge challenge for enterprises today. That's one thing that I want to put on the table in terms of this fragmented space that, uh, environment that, that enterprises have to deal with today. A second major issue is siloed key management. So I, I'm, there are many different ways of protecting my keys, and maybe it's important for a moment to talk about the difference between key management and key protection. So uh, we talked about having you know, this sort of a key store where it's somewhere where I put different cryptographic keys, so K1, K2, and so on, and then applications that want to uh, use a key or, do, or carry out an operation will, will send a request to this key store and we'll get back the response from that operation. So it could be decrypt this for me or sign this for me or whatever it is and they'll send that to the key store and they'll get back the response. The idea is that this key store protects the key from being stolen so uh, you know, it's a machine that an adversary can't get inside or, or something like that and, and traditionally there have been a number of solutions. One is uh, a physical HSM. HSM is a hardware security module. It's this uh, very secure box that uh, prevents anybody from opening it up. Uh, it's even a bit James Bond-like. If you open it up, there's like a, a net that detects that there's light or something is hit and, and it, was, it pours acid on the disk and destroys it. it, it, it some of the HSMs even have those features. But it's like this very secure box that doesn't let the keys out ever. It has a bit of a problem that it relates to the problem of physical security more than software security, but, and software is the main problem today. But irrespective, this is where a lot of keys are kept. There are other solutions though. There are these what we call cloud key management systems or cloud KMS. So in, in Amazon it's called KMS, in Azure it's called Azure Vault, but each one has its own uh, key management system. There are all these uh, like do-it-yourself sort of solutions. I'm, uh, uh, in code signing, it happens a lot. Developers <coughs> have um, keys on laptops or on build machines all over the place. So we have keys that are in you know, sort of do-it-yourself situations. And then we have, uh, uh, we may have you know, lots of keys just lying around on servers that are used to authenticate them or on users' laptops. So we have all, all of these keys and, and all of these need to be protected. And what I was saying beforehand is, is that this one notion of a key store, which sounds like it's, you know, okay, there's a key store, it doesn't work that way because I may have wanted to use HSMs on-prem and I go to the cloud and maybe that cloud doesn't even offer me that, that same HSM uh, uh, feature that, that I'm using on-prem. And even if it does, it works in a completely different way. And the cloud KMS works with differently to HSMs and, and let's put cloud HSMs because it's a variant, but they're different. And even different HSMs, there are different HSM vendors, they'll also work differently. And certainly if it's do-it-yourself, then, it, it, then you know, some programmer, some developer did, did something different. And, and all of these will work in a different way. Um, and, 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 but I need to protect all of them. That's what's the same. The same is that, that they all need to be protected. The problem is that I need to somehow access all of these and, and they're all, uh, again, working differently. Uh, on top of that is, is, the, is the notion of management. Okay, so I need to somehow manage these keys and management uh, is both a functional thing that I need to do. Yes, I need to be able to make, insure, make sure this application needs to be able to sign, so I need to give them access to work with, uh, um, with that key. That's a very functional type of perspective or, or, or uh, um, operation. But there's also a lot, of, a lot related to security when it comes to management. For example, what cryptographic algorithms and key links do we allow in our, in our organization? That, that's a policy. We have access control lists which says who's allowed to access what and when. Who are the administrators to administer all of those keys? Um, there are many different types of policies, key rotation. So when do we have to change keys, which is good practice in case keys get stolen? There, there are a whole series of policies that we need to deploy in an organization. So we need this management console. We need something that enables to manage all of this, this mess here. Uh, but now the problem, uh, another problem comes up that, okay, so this one has its own management console, and this one has its own management console, and this one maybe doesn't even have any management console at all, and this one has a different com a management console, and if I'm in AWS or Azure, they'll be different, and now suddenly I have uh, uh, many different management consoles for different solutions, and even if I'm just using HSMs in my organization, uh, different HSMs from different vendors will have different management consoles. That's extremely painful. It's painful because it's a waste of time and money, uh, and that's of course very important, 
but it also becomes a security issue because when I want to deploy a company-wide policy, I have to go and do that manually in each different one. When I want to change that policy, I have to do it manually in each and every one, and that uh, is very error-prone and, and difficult. And Unbound Core talks about making all of this easy to do. And the first thing that we do is this management system is we build a management system which works for all key stores. So we're able to abstract out this notion of a key store to give to, and have a unified treatment of that key store. So it would look something like this. Instead of all of this mess everywhere, we can now draw something that uh, is more appealing. And so we have unbound core management. And that uh, unbound core platform sits on top of different key stores. And, and, and there can be many different key stores, but for example, this can be, you know, uh, an HSM, uh, I'll just call them one and two, just so I don't point out specific vendors. There may be diff two different types of HSMs. Uh, this may be Azure Vault, and so on and so forth. And there will also be Unbound Virtual HSM, which I'll talk about a bit later on. But all of these will now be managed from one place. So all of the uh, policy side deploying company-wide policies now becomes easy to find it in one place and it will be deployed everywhere across the organization. Access control, one place across the organization. Key rotation. Um, all of those things can now be managed in one place. Another very important thing we didn't talk about is auditing. So security and visibility are very, very related. We want to know what's actually happening in, in our system. When uh, attackers are inside our system, and we talk about zero trust a lot, and I'll talk about more later on, uh, we talk about zero trust a lot, that means that attackers are inside our networks, and, and we have to build solutions that are resilient and secure even in that situation. And a very important element of uh, those, those scenarios is, is auditing. Can we look and see what operations are taking place, and do they make sense? Are there anomalies? Are there things that, uh, you know, uh, uh, an employee on vacation uh, asked to reset their password. Okay, that, that's very suspect. Why you know, an employee on vacation shouldn't be accessing, accessing the system. So the fact that they asked them to reset the password, that, that makes us think that could be an attacker. So that's uh, they're just, just one example. Or we see that uh, many, many credit card uh, transactions are happening on uh, the 2nd of January. Okay, which is strange. That's like after, you know. New Year's is over, we've finished Christmas, we've finished New Year's, now, now you know, the time's out. Why suddenly there's this big boost in, in requests to buy things? We should make, maybe we should think there's something wrong, like if someone is asking to decrypt so many credit card numbers or something like that. So when we have a fragmented space, we have one audit log in AWS, another in Azure, we have another one for, for these HSMs, we may not even have auditing for our do-it-yourself do, you know, do uh, solutions. And then we have to try and somehow bring them together, but they're all different formats. Now, nothing's impossible. You can do everything. But how much effort you have to put in to be able to bring it all together, it, it just becomes absurd, uh, and it isn't done very well, if, it, if, if at all. But Unbound Core will give you one audit log of everything happening inside your organization. You can connect that to a seam and then have visibility into everything that's happening inside the organization. Uh, that, th this notion of unifying the cryptographic landscape is what Unbound Core is really about. Okay, from a fragmented world with different solutions in different environments to a uh, single console that abstracts out everything that's happening underneath. And it's not just the management side in terms of uh, administrators, it's also applications. Right, I can have an application which is, I don't know, database encryption, okay? And I can use that by connecting it directly to an HSM. That's, of course, uh, possible, and it works. Um, but then if I want to move that database somewhere else, I have to, I have to change things, or, or I have to work differently. And again, I'm back to the situation with different, different systems. But if I connect that directly to the Unbound Core Platform, or maybe I should, I should just call it Core Platform instead of Management, because it's not just Management. If I connect it there, then uh, the database no longer cares what key store the key is in. That is handled by the platform. So uh, the database, the, the, there's a name for the key, it's called a handle, there's a name for the key, 
and the database couldn't care if that key is in a physical HSM, a cloud KMS, or an unbounds virtual HSM. It just doesn't make any difference and it all will work in exactly the same way. That's extremely powerful. I'll give you another example why. I may have an application here, and we talked about this beforehand, about this PKCS, PKCS11 library, which is a standard library for doing cryptographic operations. So I have an application that works in PKCS11. It's a standard library. It's been around for many, many years. It's one of the oldest ones, actually. Um, and I want the key to be in Azure Vault, but Azure Vault doesn't speak PKCS11. So either I have to do that bridge myself, or I can connect it to the core platform. And, the pl and, the, and core will, will translate that to whatever Azure actually speaks. And so I, again, I have my applications written in one way, uh, and this is like a, this universal API type of idea where I can speak in whatever uh, uh, standard library I want to the core platform, and that will be translated to whatever is needed for whatever key store is underneath. Uh, another thing that uh, Unbound, uh, that, that the core platform does, is what we call uh, generates a mesh. So a mesh is really just a, uh, uh, a series of devices that are all uh, connected directly. So if I have uh, um, you know, five different devices, a mesh is something that you know they're all connected and, and connected by all possible uh, uh, um, connections, and and that means that they, they can do a lot of things together, which are very powerful. One example is if I want to uh, add a key or delete a key, or I want to um, add permission for a client to access a key, if, if it's in a mesh network, then I can just add it here, and it's automatically going to propagate to the entire network. So I don't have to manually go and now do this operation with every single different device. And that's a completely different paradigm to ex the existing paradigm today of silos. So we have you know, physical HSMs. E even if I have an HSM uh, uh, setup, and I have three different data centers, in each I have two HSMs because you need to have high availability, then when you add something to one HSM, add a key, you actually have to manually go and add it to all the others. Uh, that, that, it's crazy. It's really crazy, but that's the way this, this works. Uh, it was designed that way for security, but you can get security in other ways, um, and that just doesn't work the way modern computing environments work. So we need to update our cryptographic devices so that they work uh, in, in the way everything else in software works, and that's exactly by creating this mesh. And when it's Unbound's virtual HSM that I'll talk about in a minute, uh, then it's an, it natively a mesh because it's software, so they talk to each other. And everything else, we create what we call a, a virtual mesh, which is essentially that the core platform takes care of orchestrating all of those operations between these different uh, between these different devices. So let me talk a little bit about what Unbound's virtual HSM is and, and how, uh, uh, how we can build that. So a lot about what I talked about is uh, related to the fact that there is software. And uh, once you build software, then uh, it can behave in the way all other software works. It can be virtualized, it can be in a virtual machine or in a container, uh, and it can be anywhere, and it can scale up and down, and, and things like high availability and backup, all, all these become really simple because it's just software and there are uh, very strong software paradigms to work with. The problem is, we talked about this key store, that you know, this place where we're going to put these keys, and they need to be protected. And uh, if it was so easy to protect the key in software, then it would have been done well years before Unbound. There's a reason why organizations use HSMs and other devices to protect keys, because protecting keys, in, you know, if you put a key just in, in, in a regular machine, you, you haven't done very much. I have, I'm encrypting my database, and I put the key on the same machine as the database, so I steal the encrypted database, and I steal the key, and I decrypt it all at home. I haven't done anything. So I need, you know, to build some machine that's going to be uh, difficult to steal the key from, and uh, if it's only software, then it's going, you know, especially, we talk about zero trust, right? zero trust network, we assume the attackers are everywhere, so the attacker will get to this machine and just steal the key. And then once they steal the key, they go home and they can uh, do whatever that they want to do. So uh, uh, how can we build a virtual HSM that will give us the trust that we want in, in, in today's networks? The, the key is to, uh, the key, sorry, pardon the pun, is to uh, um, take a completely different paradigm from the old paradigm of building a fortress around this, this machine that holds the keys 
and, and to uh, get security via um, by separation. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm not going to put the key in a single place. I'm going to split the key into uh, two or more pieces. It could be even more. So that uh, each individual piece actually doesn't give any information about the key. It just looks like random garbage and only when uh, you have both pieces can you make any sense out of it. And, and what that means is that the attacker now is going to have to steal both of these pieces in order to get anything. And if he steals only that piece, then he gets nothing. It's just random garbage. Um, the problem is, you immediately start thinking, one second, but if, if, if you do that, then how can you use the key? How can you compute a cryptographic operation like signing or encrypting or decrypting or authenticating if you don't actually have the key material? You need to hold something to compute on it. Well, fortunately, there's technology that, that enables you to do exactly that. And that technology is called MPC, or Secure Multi-Party Computation. It's been around in uh, academia since the mid to late 80s. I started researching in the beginning of my PhD in 1998. I actually did about 20 years research uh, in this field from beginning when it was pure theory, um, making it more efficient, making it practically efficient, and now in Unbound actually commercializing this technology. And what MPC enables you to do is to compute on pieces of information without ever bringing them together. So I can split, I can generate this key in a split form. I didn't even have it together at any single point. And when I compute, I don't bring it together quickly and compute it and then throw away. No, it's never in any place at any time. And, and, and there are mathematically proven security guarantees for MPC that if you don't bring it together, or sorry, if you don't, if you don't breach both machines, then you can't learn anything, anything at all. And uh, uh, that paradigm now means that we are able to get a software solution with high security as long as we can get strong separation between these two. And there are many, many different ways of getting strong separation. The most basic and very obvious is that we can have different administrative credentials. So we need to administer these systems and their, administ their administrative credentials to log into the machines. Um, but if that's the, um, that's the one that we need for administra uh, administration on an ongoing basis, that could be the standard administrative credentials. And these can be other credentials that don't exist anywhere else in the system. That already makes it very hard for the attacker to get to both. They can be different administrators completely. So now you mitigate inside a threat because there's no employee who can access both machines. There can be different operating systems if the organization has different operating systems. They can be in different environments. We have one uh, customer who's deploying uh, where one of these is in AWS and the other in Azure. And they have another pair between Azure and a data center. Another between a data center and Azure so, and, and AWS. So now you have uh, three pairs that are completely all separate over different environments and each pair has a different sharing of the key. So you have to break into two completely different environments in order to learn anything and then that's very, very hard. And not only that, but this sharing changes all the time. So you'd actually have to break into it at, at essentially the same time. Not going to go into the cryptographic details of, of how that works, but that is what secure multi-party computation gives you and, and there's a lot of information on Unbound's website and, and elsewhere where you can find about MPC and how it works to exactly solve this problem. Once we have this uh, core element of a vir the virtual HSM, we're able to complement existing legacy solutions that, that use hardware or uh, in, in the cloud with this software solution where it's relevant. There are some places where you want to continue using a physical HSM. Great. Uh, use it, but use it with Unbound core platforms so that you can manage it in one place. Uh, you, there are other places you might want to use a cloud KMS uh, but there are many places where a virtual HSM or a software HSM, it's FIPS 140-2 level 2 certified, it's, that, that gives you the security that you need and the flexibility that you don't get with anything else. And um, once, you, once you add that to the mix of everything else, you now get this, on the one hand, unified environment with a centralized management system, but a decentralized uh, uh, core underneath. You can be using anything you want, whether it's physical HSMs with hardware, Cloud KMSs or virtual HSM, they all work in a unified way. So centralized management with all the visibility uh, and management benefits that come with it uh, with a in a decentralized world, which is the modern world that we work in today.